I'm always trying to think of ways to create really high quality, entertaining streams. We talk a lot about high-end equipment like cameras, lights, microphones, making dope overlays, uh, this Pepe plushie behind me, you know, the whole thing. But I've been reading your comments and it's pretty clear to me now that there are a lot of you who are just starting out streaming for the first time, especially with the whole global situation going on right now. A lot of you guys have a lot of free time on your hand and you're trying streaming for the first time in your life. So I thought, for you brand new streamers out there, I do a video that is a little bit more beginner focused. So I thought I'd show you guys some basic tricks that you can do in OBS just to make your stream just a little bit more interesting. It's worth noting, we're going to be talking about OBS Studio and not Streamlabs OBS. There's a lot of reasons why I prefer regular OBS. I'm not going to get into it right now. But if you can master everything in this video, I promise you, you will know more about OBS than like 95% of streamers out there. And how do I know this? Well, I kind of just pulled that number out of my ass. Now, a lot of these tricks are going to seem basic because they are, but every single streamer that you've seen with an advanced stream overlay uses these tricks. And if I want to show you guys how to do more advanced stuff in OBS on this channel, then I need to make sure you guys know how to walk before you can run. That was very corny, dude. You know, I just rolled the intro. <clears throat> This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Do you like to feel secure or some sh like that? No, I'm just kidding. Nobody wants to sponsor me. What's up guys, it's Nadia. Before we get into this video, I realized that some of you guys are a little bit more advanced and you probably know everything I'm gonna talk about in this video, but you know what? You should watch the video anyway, because maybe you don't know everything, Peter. Starting off with number one, literally the entire reason I made this video, and it actually shocks me how many people don't know this, you can add scenes to other scenes. This is what I like to call scene nesting. And the reason you'd want to do this is sometimes you might want to group a bunch of sources together in OBS. Like let's just say you have your camera with your camera border and you want it to act as a single source that you can just freely drag around on your overlay. And this is really simple to do. All you have to do is go to your source list in OBS, right click, go to add, and then in that list, you'll see something that says scene. Then from there, just select any scene that you want and bam, you're done. You can now just drag this around, you can resize it, you can crop it, you can do anything you want, just like any other source. Now I know some of you might be thinking, M Mr. YouTube, I have a question. Uh, yes, I have a question. Why can't you just highlight the scenes and then click group? Like, doesn't that do the same thing? Now that's actually a really good question because grouping together sources in OBS is also a good option. But there's a couple reasons why I prefer scene nesting. Number one, this just looks nasty, gross. And second, and more importantly, you can't put groups within groups. With scene nesting, you can put scenes within scenes within scenes. So you can basically make overlays in OBS that are practically infinite number of layers deep. If you want, you can think of it like layering objects in Photoshop. So you can just create some seriously advanced and seriously complex stream layouts. Just to give you an idea of how I use nested scenes in my streams, I use a multi-camera setup and what I like to do is I like to switch between all of my cameras all the time. Well, what I've seen a lot of people do is, let's just say you have your game screen and you want to use a multi-camera setup. So a lot of people, they stack all of their cameras on top of each other and then they just enable and disable the cameras that they want showing. And look, that works perfectly fine if that's your only scene, but what if you wanted to set up an intermission screen and on that you wanted to add all your cameras? So you have to go through one by one, adding each of your cameras and like, for real, who has time for that, you know? Not you, you're a busy man or woman. Instead, what you really should be doing is creating a separate scene, let's just call it a camera scene and just add your camera stack there. Then every time you wanna use your camera stack, you just add your camera scene as a source. Then if you wanna switch between each camera, then you can use the hotkeys within OBS, or if you have something like a stream deck or you're using an app like Touch Portal, you can just use that to toggle each of the cameras that you wanna use. But this is just one example. There are plenty of ways that you can use nested scenes within OBS. The second trick in our list is filters. Now, a lot of you have probably used filters before. In case you don't know, if you right click a source in OBS and go to filters, you can add a bunch of things like you can crop your webcam, you can add color correction, you can chroma key for green screens. But one of the filters that I think every streamer should know about is the mask filter. So you can 
can think of this as like a cookie cutter for cutting shapes out of your camera or really any source for that matter. So let's just say you're bored of the normal rectangular shape for your camera and you want to do something different. You Maybe you want to cut out a circle for your camera. I don't know, to accentuate the roundness of your face or something like that. Well, what you do is you go into something like Photoshop or if you don't have Photoshop, you can use GIMP then you create a circle save that as a transparent png file then go into obs and click on whatever source you want to apply that mask filter to go to filters and then add a mask filter select alpha mask alpha channel browse for the png file you made and click ok and then boom that's it you've made your camera into a circle. Now you can apply multiple filters to any source in OBS, but here's the thing. It turns out that a lot of people don't realize that the order that you apply the filters actually matters. Let's just say I go and I add a blur filter to my camera. Now you're not gonna see the blur filter by default. We'll talk about that in a second. Then let's just say underneath that, we add a mask to cut out the circular shape for our camera. What you'll notice is if we add the filters in this order, so blur first, then mask second, we get these hard edges around the camera. But watch this, let's flip it around and we'll add the mask first and the blur second. And then now we have these soft edges around the camera border. And the reason for that is now we're telling OBS to cut the shape out of the camera first and then apply the blur filter to it. So just keep that in mind when you're adding filters, the order does matter. The next OBS trick we have is audio related. Now, something every streamer has nowadays, they all have a starting soon screen and on your starting soon screen, you wanna have your mic muted. Then once you're ready to start your stream, then you want your mic to kick in. By default, OBS automatically adds one microphone source and one desktop audio source to every single scene that you create. So what that means is when you're ready to start your stream, you have to click once to change scenes and then you have to click another time to unmute your microphone. And that's like twice as many clicks. Like you click once, okay, that's cool. Then you click again, you're like, God damn it, I'm too tired to stream now. What you should do is you should go into your settings in OBS, go into audio and make sure you've disabled all your audio devices, everything. There shouldn't be anything enabled here. Instead, go into your OBS scenes and then add a source called audio input capture and audio output capture. Input is obviously gonna be for your microphone and output is obviously gonna be for your desktop audio. Then all you need to do is any scene that you want your microphone activated, you add your microphone. If you don't want your mic activated, don't add your microphone. What this is also good for is having different levels set for your audio for different scenes. So what you could potentially do is maybe in your game screen, you wanna have your game audio to be louder, but then when you switch to your intermission screen, you want your audio to get quieter. Well, what you do is you'd add two audio output sources, then you'd set the levels. One would be quiet, one would be louder. Then you just put the quieter version on your intermission screen and then the louder version on your game screen. At this point of the video, you advanced OBS users are ready to click off. You guys are like, this is too boring. This is too easy for me. I want something spicy, man. Here it is. Here's something a little bit more advanced that you can do. On my stream, I have a starting soon screen that has my music playing. But when my stream actually starts, I still have my music playing, but this version of my music, I've added an audio filter to it. I added a Reaper VST plugin. If you don't know what Reaper is, I did another video on that. But basically, I added an EQ to the music source that filters out all the high frequencies and only lets the bass frequencies through. So the result is you get sort of this muffled audio sound. And that creates this really cool effect where my music audio starts out normal, but as I transition into my intermission scene, then my audio fades from normal into this muffled effect. It's a little bit hard to understand, so I'll insert a clip here to show you how that sounds like. The next OBS trick is to expand upon the basic features that OBS already provides by downloading and installing plugins. I'm pretty sure the vast majority of you guys already know what plugins are because as it turns out, yeah, you guys seem to really like plugins. For you new streamers out there who aren't aware, you can think of a plugin like a Chrome extension. It just adds features to OBS that it doesn't have by default. 
Now you can do a lot of different things with plugins. You can do that blur effect that I was talking about earlier by installing this stream effects plugin. But there's so many different plugins out there. There are plugins for doing instant replays or doing different kinds of effects or adding different types of transitions to OBS. I've made two videos so far covering a total of 10 OBS plugins. And by the way, those two videos, some of my most viewed videos by far, basically carrying the entire channel at the moment. Now look, I get it. This one's kind of a cop out. Some of you guys are probably thinking, Nutty's just recycling content because he's run out of ideas for videos. But hey, if they can still air reruns of Friends, I can recycle content. Like we get it, man. She got off the plane. Like, sorry, spoiler alert, but the show's been done for like 15 years. If you haven't watched it yet, that's on you, bud. This next OBS trick was totally not recorded the next day. This is not something your viewers are going to notice, but it is going to make your life a hell of a lot easier. This feature is called custom browser docs, and it's a feature that came to OBS a few months ago, but I feel like it's something that people don't use enough. You can think of this like a Chrome browser built directly into OBS, so you can link websites that you use all the time when you're streaming. Things like your stream elements activity window, so you can keep track of all your followers, donations, subs, and all that. Or you can link your Twitch dashboard or your Twitch chat, so you can keep track of all your chat messages or you can even link like a Spotify playlist that you use every stream literally anything that you could open in a normal web browser you can add as a custom browser doc in OBS so to add a custom browser doc you just go into view docs add a custom browser doc and just type in any website that you want seriously you can put in anything you want you can put it in Google YouTube Reddit porn redacted and then the best thing is you can just rearrange your browser docs just like any other doc in OBS and just create a customized UI for your situation on top of that when you open up obs again all of these browser docs are just going to open up so this really saves a lot of time when you're opening up your stream because you don't have to open up like 50 billion websites just so you can keep track of everything you need to keep track of that's going to do it for this video guys i know this video was a little bit dry like my skin condition I have crippling eczema and it's kind of not funny, but it's important for me to go through these basic tricks because I'm probably going to be referring to these in future videos. So don't worry, next week's video is probably going to be something more fun and interesting and less boring than this one. Guys, as always, links down below to the Discord. You guys can also catch my Twitch stream. I stream four nights a week and the streams have absolutely been popping off. So you can ask me all of your streaming questions there live and I'll try to answer as best as I can. But until next time, enjoy streaming. Have fun, keep working hard, and I will see you guys in the next video. Or somewhere else, you know, if I like see you on the street, that would be pretty cool. But that's never happened to me before, so probably next video.